On today's show, we'll be interviewing fruitarian Mango Wadzak. He's a man who's been vegan since the late 80s and a self-described ethical fruitarian for about the past 15 years. We'll discover what exactly an ethical fruitarian is and how you can try the fruitarian lifestyle to see if it benefits you and your health. Thanks for listening to the Very Vegan Veg Cast, a service of VeryVeganRecipes.com. Your source for the easiest, most delicious, and exciting vegan recipes on the internet. And make sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheVeganAddict. Our guest today is Mango, who refers to himself as an ethical fruitarian. We'll be learning more about what that is. He's the author of Destination Eden, Fruitarianism Explained. You can get that on Amazon.com, as well as his latest book, The Eden Fruitarian Guidebook, which is available on his website. We'll be talking about those as well. He was the subject of a one-hour documentary by Emile Bocaire titled Pure Fruit, as well as being featured alongside his mate, Cavietta, on Australian TV's The Feed. A quick reminder, you can find the links to the books, Mango's website, the documentaries, and everything else we talk about on today's show at the website veryveganrecipes.com slash two. That's the number two, veryveganrecipes.com slash two. We look forward to learning more about his lifestyles of Rutarian, as well as how to transition to it if it's something that interests you. Thanks for spending some time with us uh, today, this morning, Mango. I know it's very uh, early where you are in Australia. We really appreciate it. That's okay, Brett. It's uh, no problem. We're bright and early this morning. I actually enjoy the morning, so it's always very peaceful before everybody else gets up. And it's uh, it's actually summertime over there when we're talking to you, wintertime here, so I'm guessing you're experiencing uh, beautiful weather now over in Australia? Uh, where we live, actually, we don't really have the four seasons, the four classic seasons that you have where you are. We have uh, two seasons, really. We have a wet and a dry and uh, we're in the middle of the wet at the moment, which is summertime, yes, I suppose. Fascinating. I have so much to learn about Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we should uh, start at the very beginning by having you tell us exactly what does being an ethical fruitarian mean? I guess it's an extension of veganism, where uh, not only do we acknowledge the sentience of animals, we also acknowledge that plants in their own right live and they also do not wish to be harmed. So we try to eat only fruit, you know, grown locally if possible, which is unlike other plant food, it's actually given karmically freely by the plant. It's the only food which is given without causing any harm. If we pull up a carrot, we are killing the carrot plant. If we uh, eat bacon, we're obviously killing the pig. But fruit is taken from the tree without harm to the tree at all. At least that's the theory. In practice, uh, it doesn't always work that way because of methods of um, agriculture that have been used all over the globe, which uh, aren't exactly uh, ideal, but at least it's more ideal than than many other things that are growing, like monocrops of cereal. That's a fascinating theory. I don't think I've ever heard that before. So it makes it, it does make some sense, though, on some level, because the fruit is a product of the plant. So you actually aren't actually eating the plant. You're eating something the plant produces. I, I'm assuming you started out as a vegan at some point in time before you transitioned to a, a fruitarian from the start, or was it some kind of a process? Can you tell us a little bit about your path to becoming a fruitarian? It all started for me back in the 1980s. I think it was probably about 1987. But I uh, was at the cinema, and I was watching the movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. It was, in any case, one of the Indiana Jones movies. And in that movie, Indiana Jones was given a bowl with some kind of grey matter in it uh, for him to eat. It became clear that the bowl that he was given was in fact the skull of a monkey and the grey soup-like material inside it was actually the brain of the monkey. Right. (laughs) And I can't really explain why, but it grossed me out. It made me think about my own food choices, really probably for the first time in my life. Before I uh, reached my flat, uh, traveling home again after the movie, 
I had made the decision that I would no longer eat animals. I think it was probably about six or seven months after making that decision. I learned of what goes on in the dairy industry and uh, how badly chickens are treated in order to steal their eggs. And I decided to go vegan. So that was all in the same year, probably back in either 87 or 88. So you went from being, uh, um, I guess, a raw food vegan to to eventually you made the path to uh, being a a ethical fruitarian, uh, as you refer to yourself today. So let's uh, let's touch a little bit on the fruitarian lifestyle for our audience in case we're piquing their interest. And of course, everything that somebody might want to know, they're going to need to refer to the books, which we'll talk about later. But maybe we could get a taste, a tip of the iceberg, if you will. Um, just broad strokes. You only eat fruit. Uh, you don't su- uh, you don't supplement with nuts, seeds or anything of that nature. Your, di- your diet is strictly 100 percent fruit. That is correct, yes. We don't eat anything other than fruit. Uh, Up until 2006, I was eating lettuce and uh, occasional radish. Anyway, since I'm coming to Australia in 2006, I have eaten predominantly only fruit. But it would be a lie for me to say that I've not eaten other things. On occasion, like if I was in the supermarket, I might break off a little sprig of broccoli and eat it or... Sometimes if we had guests, I would explain that this plant is edible and by way of demonstration, I would break off a leaf or two and eat it. But that's something that I ceased doing in 2009 when somebody pointed out the hypocrisy of of saying I was eating only fruit when at the same time I could demonstrate to people that this wild plant is edible and break off a leaf or two. So I kind of have been sticking with only fruit since, since that time. I would guess the first uh, probably question our listeners would have would be, do you often have health checkups? Are you assured that um, you're not deficient in things like B12 and other types of minerals? Do you, do you, uh, do you feel like you're at optimum health living on uh, 100% fruit? Actually, neither of us uh, make a regular point of going to doctors. Um, We don't take any vitamin supplements or anything like that. Back in 1988 or 89, after having been uh, vegan for one or two years, I was teaching English to a Hungarian doctor. And uh, she insisted that I come into her office and have my blood checked. I thought, okay, I'll go in. She's offering me a free checkup, free health checkup. And I went in and she took blood, several vials of it, and uh, had a complete blood spectrum analysis uh, taken. And uh, she noticed that the only one thing which was lower than it should have been was vitamin B12, which she informed me at the time was the lowest that she had ever seen. It was way below what it should have been. I never took any steps to rectify that because I've never experienced in my life any vitamin B12 deficiency symptoms. How many years ago was it that you were told you had the lowest levels of B12 she'd ever seen? How many years ago was that? Well, that was in 1980, uh, probably 1989. Wow. And so you, yeah. and you still, since that time, not done anything to supplement with B12 and you've had no B12 deficiency symptoms? No. So I try to live on faith. I try to live it. When I make a a choice which I believe is ethically correct, then I don't see why I should run into health problems from making an ethically correct decision. And I I really try to steer clear of all talk of carbohydrates and calories and uh, vitamins and minerals and all that. Well, I'll tell you, I think most of the audience that listens to this show would be vegan, so um, you you uh, have staunch allies in the fact that you probably shouldn't worry about protein and you shouldn't worry about carbohydrates. And I think most of us as vegans, especially if we've been vegan for, for very long, have come to know that you can get all of that from without having uh, animals or supplements. B12 is the one thing that hangs everybody up. So that's that's the one I was a little bit uh, interested in. So I, I think it's fascinating. And I tell you, your resolve to uh, stick with your beliefs is uh, 
is quite uh, remarkable. Let's say there's uh, people listening to the show right now who are interested in trying the fruitarian lifestyle. Let's say they've listened to the show, you know, a normal, typical vegan who may even be raw or someone who cooks food but is still vegan into trying fruitarianism. Should you try to eat a wide variety of fruits or should you stick with just the fruits you like or do you have any tips for for trying a, a fruitarian lifestyle? My belief is that um, if you put a selection of uh, fruit in front of you and eat that which appeals most, you will probably be getting everything that you need. It's when you start to think about things, well, I need, uh, uh, once more going back to the whole vitamins and everything, if you start to psychoanalyze every piece of fruit, then I think that's when you start to run into difficulty. But if you can just look at it and see, well, this appeals and this tastes good, this smells nice, then go for that. That's the way to eat. I think the one thing you have to bear in mind is that once, if you if you to go from one day to the next from eating cooked food, whether even if it's a simple vegan diet, to eating only fruit, raw fruit, you will notice some differences. In the long term, you'll be very these differences will be very beneficial. You'll feel much lighter, and you'll feel your energy levels are higher, and your concentration levels are higher. But initially you're going to run into problems because of something called detox. You're going to, your, your diet is going to get lighter, and, and hence uh, you, you can quite easily get symptoms where you feel, uh, maybe you feel like you're, you've got a headache or you might have aches and pains somewhere, or you may feel discomfort in the stomach. You feel, may feel even nauseous. Um, these are all symptoms which which are quite common if you to just jump from one day to the next. But having said that, though, Brett, I would like to add that we've had several people that have come and stayed with us in the past. One of the things that we've made absolutely clear before anybody comes to us is that they must eat 100% fruit with us. Otherwise, well, I mean, you know, this is this is just our home, and we we ask people to respect this. And so anyway, people have come here and they've gone on a 100% fruit diet and surprisingly most of them have managed quite well and most of them have felt great uh, uh, improvement in their health within short matter of days. We had one particular fellow here, an old friend of mine and he, he was thinking oh, he didn't know how he would manage eating only fruit. He, he is himself someone who eats everything so he's, a, he's not a vegan but an omnivore. One thing that uh, we noticed, uh, or that he noticed, which he frankly felt was miraculous, was that he had been on uh, blood pressure medication for, for, I think, 25 to 30 years. He came to us, he started eating fruit, and he checked his uh, blood pressure. And uh, uh, this was like a day or two after being with us. And he, uh, he could not believe that his blood pressure was normal. Uh, he just could not believe it. And uh, I said, no, trust it. This is a true reading that you're seeing there. I think he went back and checked his blood pressure on a different machine, and it was low. He could not believe it. He came in. The first day he was here, he was snoring like a jet engine. We, sleeping in the bedroom right next to his, we thought, oh, we're never going to get any sleep if we sleep <laughs> for three weeks. We're not going to be able to survive this. And uh, th- this may sound incredible. In fact, it is incredible. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But within three days, it stops snoring. So to summarize your uh, thoughts on, on trying uh, fruitarianism or, you know, if you want to give it a six week try, 21 day try, people like to do these types of things to see how it makes them feel. Yep. Generally, just uh, whatever fruit appeals to you is what you would eat. And I think a lot of people subscribe to that philosophy. Your body knows what it needs. It kind of instinctively knows what types of uh, different nutrients are in what different types of foods and so it, you'll be drawn to uh, probably what your body needs the most is, is 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 i guess the simple way of putting that yeah you could say that although you, you um shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking well, if the body knows what it needs and it feels like it wants pizza then it should eat pizza <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm afraid uh, that the philosophy only works <laughs> if you present your body with a correct choice of foods. If you're presenting your body with a, a burgers and, and cheese or whatever, uh, then your body can be uh, tricked into thinking that it wants something that it really doesn't. What What is your thoughts on uh, blending and smoothies? Because I, I know when I ate only fruit, 
Uh, I would start my day with a smoothie, so I wasn't actually eating bananas and mangoes and pineapples. I was blending them up in a smoothie and drinking them. Um, is that fine? Do you think there's any kind of problem with that, or what are your thoughts on doing smoothies? I think there's absolutely no problem with that, Brett. I mean, we tend to drink an awful lot of juices. In fact, we're sort of a borderline liquidarian in many ways. <laughs> we uh, First uh, meal of the day is a, a juice that we have, one and a half liters of juice each, my partner and I, and uh, that would be maybe mango, orange, banana smoothie. And then later on in the day, we will have a juice which is made predominantly from uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and pumpkin at the moment. We're eating a lot of pumpkin, juicing a lot of pumpkin. We have a slow press juicer, which I recommend for everybody, really. It's the best way to juice your food. So let's talk a little bit about your books. Uh, your, uh, the first of your two books, Destination Eden, Fraternism Explained, this book has been out for a while. It's in several languages all around the globe. Uh, what exactly is the book about, and what would we learn or gain uh, if we added this book to our uh, library? I think the, the predominant the focus of, of both of my books, actually, is about manifesting Eden. Um, I believe that Eden is Earth's true state. I, my first book goes through every step of, of where we're currently at. So I talk about omnivorism, vegetarianism, veganism, raw food, and uh, fruitarianism. And I also go into more detail about things like naturism, the importance of getting out in the sunshine, uh, getting the sun on your body as much as possible, walking barefoot. Um, I think that it's a tremendous benefit to one's health to walk barefoot, to not wear shoes. It's just one of the many, many things in human society that we take for granted is that we need to wear shoes. And we don't realize what an injustice it is to our feet, really, that we walk around with these things, these clumpy things on our feet, when we could just as easily be walking around uh, feeling the heart of the earth coming up through our feet. Uh, one thing that I'd like to to mention about my, my second book, it's a, a, I like to think of it as a nice resource actually for, for vegans to ever get into debates with non-vegans. My first chapter is uh, dedicated to um, answering every single mundane question that non-vegans ever uh, pose against veganism. So they're sort of counter arguments uh, in opposition to veganism. I've listed between 70 and 80 different um, typical responses that they give and uh, and how you can answer those questions. So I think that's something which, which a lot of vegans will find quite useful if they ever get into a debate with uh, Omnivore. We have a fan base of a little over 100,000. Uh, I have a private vegan group of about 10,000, and I can't tell you how many times every day somebody asks me how to respond to this. Their, their sister is saying this to them, or their brother is telling them this is going to be bad, or their, you know, their parents are concerned that this is if they stay vegan, this is going to happen, and they don't, they don't really know how to answer those questions. So. Um, a, a, resor mm. a resource like that would be a great, especially for new vegans who can, you know, they're new to veganism and they feel a little bit intimidated and maybe they don't know all the answers. Uh, I think I think that would be great for somebody in that position. I think I've come across pretty much every single question that uh, that's posed countering veganism. And I try to uh, address every single one of those issues. And I hope I've done so. And if I haven't, I'd be happy if anybody lets me know and said, look, Mango, you missed out this question. And I will try and add it into a future version of the book if it's not there. But uh, I think that I've done a pretty good job of covering it. I'll tell you, you're uh, one of the more interesting and fascinating vegans that I've spoken with. And I really appreciate you spending time with me on the show today. We're going to place the links to all the books up on the uh, the uh, podcast blog, which you can find at veryveganrecipes.com slash two. That's the number two. And, of course, we, want, we will also link to Mango's blog, websites, and other resources as well. Where you can watch the documentary and all of those things. Thank you so much for being on the show today and spending time with us. Uh, I look forward to uh, – I haven't read your books yet, but I am actually plan on ordering them and reading them myself. And I'm sure many of our listeners are, are going to get enjoy from them as well. And uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you at some point in time in the, in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Very Vegan VegCast, a service of VeryVeganRecipes.com. Your source for the easiest, most delicious, and exciting vegan recipes on the internet. And make sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheVeganAddict.